someone prepared. Mm -hmm. But while you're preparing, there's opportunity that's happening because, first of all, every bear market lasts on average a year, goes down 33%, but you don't lose 33 unless you sell it. And here's the one thing I want people to hear. In two centuries of American business, Every single bear market was followed by a bull market. So you remember 2008, people lost 50%. This is it went up, this it went up 69% over the next 12 months. Buffett's he always talks about Buffett this. is so, it's such a great concept. I, I believe in it so much, which is, unless you're betting on America disappearing, you will win. For centuries. That's it. That's it. And we're going to keep, we're gonna keep growing. And by the way, every month on average, we have a new high. So, so when you hear so, it's high, oh my God, it's going to crash, it's high. But let me give you one more, because this is the timing. And this will maybe the payoff for you. Payoff is, I, would, I just did the J.P. Morgan Alternative Investments Conference in Miami. You have to be a billionaire to attend. You have to prove it with your net worth. There's 400 people there. It's an amazing group. J.P. Morgan did a 20-year study, and Schwab did one also separate. They found in the last 20 years that S&P 500 gave you an 8.2% return. So you're doubling your money every yeah. nine years. Yeah. Pretty cool thing. But what they found was, if you were out of the market on the 10 best trading days in 20 years, instead of 8.2, you got 4.5, almost half as much money. If you miss the top 20 days, trading days, in 20 years, one day a year, you're doing what you're yeah. doing, trying yeah. to be the right yeah. time, yeah. you got a 2% return. You might as well have been bonds. If you miss the top 30 days, you lose money. Makes a ton of sense. In 20 years. Makes sense. So the most difficult, the dumbest thing you can do is be out of the market. Not you, just No, no, I get it. Because you I'm can be in the market. The, I'm plenty in the market. I'm plenty in the market. Because I believe and, in it. And then also being prepared. So, Tony, listen. I, first of all, one of my favorite things about you from afar, we get to hang once in blue moon, random yes. calls here and there. But from afar, you know what I love about you? You, you fucking hustle. <laughs> like, I feel like you're, the book came out today. You're freaking everywhere, doing your thing. That's what you're good at. We have a very large audience. of a, like you're good, I know you're good at what you're doing. But here we have a real awesome opportunity. Because I think we're going to go deep in a narrow field. Yeah. So the majority of these people, I don't think, are, are looking at the stock market. I, I even look at the characters here. Yes, the I way they think of, Yeah, the way they're thinking about the stock market, so different. In a world where you might not have cash, and where you might have debt, or if you're not even in debt, you just don't have a lot of cash. Talk to me about somebody sitting with $10,000, which, by the way, for high percentages, is still a ton. Correct. But is there anything that, you, if they have $1,500, are they, should they be out of the market? Like, what do they, like, I know we're going well, very, well, very, very micro here, yes. but I actually want to bring value. No, I want to do My cut payoff is actually bringing value to everybody watching. I'm, I'm going to Go say that. I give an example in the book here. And I'm going to take a phone call. Get ready for phone calls. Chris, you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Forget just the $10,000. What matters is the system you put in place. The shit you do randomly every now and then because you got money is not going to help you much, right? <laughs> Especially so when, if it's a fucking fat whip or a watch. <laughs> yes. So the number one pe most important financial decision for everyone watching, everyone in this room, really, we all know, you got to become an owner instead of somebody that is constantly you know, utilizing products. In other words, if you have an iPhone and you don't own Apple, what's wrong? You're a consumer. You're not an owner. you got to become an owner. How do you do it? Every person in this room has got, regardless whether you can get the money or not, to make the most important financial decision, which says to be an owner, I have to take a percentage of my income, and no matter what, off the top, automate it so I don't see it, put that in an investment account. Now, what's the number? You might say, I can't, Tony, I'm starting my business, I'm strapped. I tell all business owners the example of a gentleman, true story, Theodore Johnson, 1950s, works for UPS, guy never makes more than 14000 in a year. He retires with $71 million. He gives away $35 million while he's still so alive. How is that possible? A friend of his did what we're teaching. Comes to him and says, I'm going to make you rich. He goes, I'm not rich. I make 14 grand a year, right? He says, I'll make you rich. I'm going to put 20% tax on you. He goes, what are you talking about? I can't pay my bills as it is. He said, listen to me. Adjust. If the government gave you an additional 20% tax, you'd pitch, you'd yell, you'd scream, and you'd pay it. Because you have to and your brain adjusts. But that money goes in his investment account. The compounding of that account made him $70 million and he ever made them $14 million. Andy, do you have Facebook stock? Yes. Because of all the chatter we always have in here? Yes. Like, that's the punchline, right? Like, we know, because we've lived in this world for the last yes. three years, I've been yelling, and Andy will tell you, not yet, um, that uh, just buy, we know Facebook's underpriced. Like, that's but, even now. But here's what you got to be careful of. And this is something Ray Dalio taught me, one of the smartest men on the face of the earth. He said, Tony, I don't care what it is you know. You're going to invest in what you know because you have certainty. Of course. Right? Whatever you know is going to drop 50 to 70% sometime in your life. That's right. And he said if it's later in life, you're completely screwed. Which is why diversity matters. That's yes. why the diversification matters. But let me give you the guys here watching. Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's yes. Just, and Ray's right. Like, that's just non-debatable. That's totally not debatable. Yes. It is interesting to see 
So you don't want to, what I'm saying is you don't want to just own Facebook oh, and whatever it be. You've got to have across the board because you say, I want to have the best one. I want to have Facebook. There's an interesting that. debate that if you're actually knowledgeable about a sector yes. and you're only putting two to $4,000 a year to work, that's an interesting debate. It's an, it's an interesting and debate. Way, and by the way, when, you're the, Amazon, show, when yeah. you're the show, you can also be more heavily oriented stocks. You can take more sure. losses because you have more time. But think of it this way. Just go back to compounding as a simple example. Guy in here, I talked about right. the book, 19 years old. Dad convinces him to save 300 bucks a month, 4,000 bucks a year. So it's within the range of anybody here you're talking about, yep. right? Guy starts at 19, stops doing it at 28. He only puts in 35 grand. He puts it in the market, and the market's grown 10% over 30 years. But let's use 8% to be more conservative. Last 20 years have been more 8%. At 8%, that'll go to 941,000 without another dime. He'll have a million bucks off of $50,000. you're preaching. But on the other hand, his best friend waits till he's 29. He does the same thing. And he, but he has to keep investing to 65. He puts in almost 180 grand. He doesn't get the million. Yeah, the math. The math. You got to get it. You got to get it. All right, you got some. I know. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you by the way, I want to tell, yeah. tell everybody. By the it's way, it's gonna work. Yeah. I want to tell you guys. You by the way, this interview your whole life. Let's okay. go. Thank you. I want to tell you by the way for everybody watching this book, my last book, I donated 100 percent of the profits, five million bucks. I'm doing the same thing with this one. We fed 100 million people between my donation and the additional donations I made in 2015. 100 million people last year through my partnership Feeding America. We're feeding 100 million people. 100% of this goes to that. We're going to feed a billion people over the next seven years to Feeding America. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And it's all coming from the book. While, he's, while Chris is trying to figure out how to dial a phone, <laughs> talk to me real quick about the Netflix uh, uh, documentary impact. I, I, I try to trade culture and attention. Yes. Um, I could taste it in the ecosystem. You've been a known brand for decades. Where does that, what, what was the impact of that uh, documentary? It's huge, it's huge, you know, because it's taken, you know, I decided to put it on Netflix because it immediately put me in 172 countries and they translated it for all those languages. Huge. So the level of distribution, level. and it's free, you're already there, people are already on Netflix and they got five stars and it took off like crazy. So the concentrate, you know, I went to the, the fight with Diaz versus, uh -huh. oh there you go. There we go. I went to the UFC fight, and it's like we'll all these young guys coming up to me that yeah. normally oh. wouldn't know. That are like out this of is Gary mind. Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary V show with Tony Robbins. What's your name, and are you excited? Holy shit. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm a huge fan of both of you guys. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, my name is Brandon Dendis, and I'm coming from Denver, Colorado. Love it, man. What's your question? Um... So it's a little bit off topic. I That's okay. We're talking about We're, we adjust. Yeah, we'll get it out. But um, you're, both of you are a huge uh, advocate for gratitude, and that kind of, you know, delivers your energy and how you guys interact with, um, you know, everyone, oh, especially you, the area of social media and stuff like that. So uh, my question for you is, like, how do you become so... Grateful? Um, so grateful, yeah, exactly, um, to have this energy, especially from um, Tony's position of just like, you know, I, I dove into your uh, documentary on Netflix, and um, that was actually the first time I was exposed to you. Actually, my father, uh, who owns an independent agency in, in Connecticut, um, very successful, um, quoted you as a huge inspiration, so um, I kind of dove into your content and, and fell into uh, you know, your hands and your your guidance. So they're big but, ass you know, hands too, by the way. Well, listen. Thank you for the question, Tony. So the question is, how do you create the gratitude? I'm not quite clear. Yeah. How do you? How, well, I, go ahead. So, I, I, so how, how do you become? How do you become so grateful? And because of that, you live a life. I, of, I, yeah, I, I, I think this is a, actually this is a great first question, but thank you so much because I actually think he nailed it, which is, I actually think he's right. Like, like in. And what I see in you and from others, like gratitude, it's incredible what gratitude does. Well, the two things that mess everybody up are anger and fear. When you let them dominate you, you're in trouble. And you can't be angry and grateful simultaneously. It's nope. the antidote. It's the only antidote that really works. And you can't be fearful and grateful simultaneously. So for me to answer this question, I, I don't hope I'm going to be grateful. I have a system. Like anything in life, I, you know, if you're a great pilot, you know how to fly a jet, you still have a checklist. Because if you miss the checklist, the consequences are too big. So I'm not a big meditator. Uh, my meditations have been active. It's been physical. It's been in nature. It's been ripping things open. It's being on stage. But I started a few years ago doing what I call priming. 
what priming is, is most people think their thoughts are their thoughts, when really your thoughts have been primed by the environment. That's why you want to create the environments like you create and I create, because it makes you be your best. But specifically, there was a study where they took a group of actors, they had them go out to 200 people, and the only thing different, they walked up to each person, and the only difference was they held a half cup of coffee, they walk up to you, a stranger, go, would you hold this for a second? They look down so you can't say yes or no, and you end up taking it. They get their phone, they adjust it, they take it back and say thank you. That's the whole thing. Same facial expression for every person. Only difference, half got an iced coffee, the other got hot coffee. Now, 30 minutes go by. They send out an assistant, a research assistant, with a clipboard, and they come up to these same individuals and say, if you give us two minutes of your time, we'll give you $20. Will you just read these three paragraphs and tell us what you think of this character a couple questions. They read the three paragraphs and they say, what do you think of the main character in this little story? 81% who are given iced coffee say the person is cold and uncaring. 80%, a 1% variance of those who are hot coffee say the person is warm and connected and caring. With nothing else but coffee 30 minutes earlier, ice cold. I could take a 50 of these. So what I do is I get up every morning and I make a radical change in my state and I have a simple deal with myself. I prime for 10 minutes every day. Because if you don't have 10 minutes, you don't have a life. There's no excuse. So I come in, I do this radical breathing change, these three sets of 30 breaths where I bring the air in and explode it out my nose because, you know, I'm sure you know from Eastern philosophy, the, the breath is like the string on a kite. The mind is the kite. Yep. You can change the mind through breath. Yep. So I do this radical breathing. It takes a minute. Then I do three things for three minutes. Really simple. I take three minutes and I focus on three specific individual things that I'm grateful for, but I don't think about them intellectually. I step into the moment, yep. remember it, feel yep. it, and just and so what it does is it activates it not as yep. a thought but as a biochemistry. Then I do three minutes of prayer and blessings, starting with my family, moving out to everybody, my clients, friends, and people I meet. Yep. And then I do three minutes on what I call three to thrive, where I focus on three important outcomes that I have that I want to accomplish, but I don't think about want to accomplish it. I see it, I feel it, experience is done, and I feel grateful. I often go I, I actually go 15 or 20 minutes right after because it feels so good. But what's happened is now you're primed. You're yeah. not hoping you're in prime time. You are in prime time. And to me, that's how I do it. And once you prime yourself, you start noticing things to be grateful for all the time. And when I asked Sir John Templeton, one of the first billionaire investor, international investor in the whole world, started with nothing, built to that. When I asked him, I said, what's the secret to wealth? I'll never forget. He looked at me and smiled and he said, Tony, it's what you teach. And I said, well, I teach a lot of things. Which thing? And he goes, gratitude. He goes, you and I, how many billionaires do you and I know that are miserable human beings that they're so unhappy? He said, they're poor. And if you've got a billion dollars, but you're frustrated and angry and sad all the time, your life is frustrated and angry and sad. How many people know of nothing, but they're grateful for their family, for their health, and they're there? To, so that is the game. To, it really me, is. to me, it comes down to its cousin, which is perspective. Yes. So I do something very similar. Every single day, I make pretend that my mother, dad, sister, brother, wife or children are killed. Now I know this is a different version of it. <laughs> I, uh, you expect that one? <laughs> I, <laughs> that you crazy son of a bitch. I know it's a little, I know it's a little different. Yes, they get stabbed in the uh, eye and then they take out the, yes, the groin. Like it's, it's sometimes even in detail, but I will tell you, it's very fleeting. It oh, maybe you're grateful the for them still being but here. I promise you, I know it's a little left field. It's insane what that perspective does for me. Yes. Nothing. And I feel it. Well, it's contrast. And I feel it. I, I get and it. I feel contrast it with my works. soul. Contrast and, works. And, and it just makes every bad thing. And by the way, and I'm sure for your business, when you're the last line of defense, uh, you know how they say occupation on the doctor form? The last time I filled it out, I said firefighter. <laughs> because that's what I think I do for a living. Like, it's just problems. Yeah. Like, my, like, when I get done with this interview, we look at my phone, seven problems, yeah. seven fires to put out. Like, that's what we do. For me, it's perspective. Like, I don't understand how people don't get that there's seven plus billion people, that there's so many people that have it worse than you. Well, look, if you live in this country, I, you know, I feed 100 million, 100 million people a year, I care. But if you live in poverty in this country, you're the 1%. You're not the 99%. I know. Two-thirds of the planet lives on $2.50 a day, $900 a year. If you're making 18000 a year, I don't want you to make 18000 But you got to start with gratitude that you're one of the richest humans on earth. It doesn't feel like it, but you are. Preaching. You are. Don't produce the show. Hello, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're on the Ask Gary Vee no. Show. Oh, yeah. there's no fucking way I got this line. <laughs> you're on, man. What's your name? Where are you from? Uh, Miguel. I'm from uh, Los Angeles, California. Awesome, Miguel. What can we help you with? Okay, um, so, god damn, hold on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so, um, I'm 20 years old. I'm in college right now. 
I'm in my junior year, the hours are really crazy because I'm going to school for game design. That's what I really want to do. But okay. I really want I really want to be able to just purchase my own game studio. Okay. Um, so I also um, I work part time. I have um, I just started a marketing business to try and bring more money in. But this is the first business thing I've ever done. And I'm trying to um, start my own gaming YouTube channel just to get my name more out there and learn how to put my, learn basically how to get on my own following yep. and become an influencer for video games myself. Okay. My question is, how uh, how do you know whether or not you're trying to basically take too much on? Right. Are you stretching yourself? You, in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I want to know. I got like, it. I got you know when you get to that point. I got it. Tony, this is such a classic question for a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. You've done it, I've done it, we've yeah. lived our lives, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like what where does where does doing a lot of different things to see if there's upside in it, which all my great things have come from. Me too. Um, stop and where does it start to you're taking on too much and now you're trying to do everything, which means you're doing nothing. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I tell most people thank you for the question. Most people who start a business very often will start two and three, four or more. And the reason they do it is because the first one isn't succeeding or they no longer have the juice for it. Exactly right. And so what happens to that person is they're never going to be successful in most cases, unless they get lucky. You get lucky and bounce across something that's easier to do. But most people are always looking for that next level. What my view is, is it's great to test all these things, but you've got to find what is your flagship. What is it that you're going to commit your soul to? Because if you don't do that, the inevitable challenge is going to come up, and you're going to then move on to something else that's more enjoyable. And so... The other thing I look at is business is about constantly, not only adding such massive value, doing more for others than anybody else, but it's also simultaneously about your own psychology. It's your ability to go through thresholds of control. Um, it's like, I can remember when I didn't have $50,000 to keep the doors open on my company. I had 12 employees and 11 wanted to quit because they hated the person running the show. And $50,000 would be like 500 million to me today. And I figured out how to get through that threshold. And once I did, like all the problems that related to that were handled. I know you've done this as well. And then I, you know, I had a five million dollar lawsuit that was totally unfair and unjust. And I finally had a, just the amount of time, energy, and yeah. money I had to bite the bullet do it. Five million was more than I could remember. Then I had a partner who took a company that was losing a million dollars a day and turned it to one point five billion in positive EBITDA. I'm not mentioning names, am I? Um, <laughs> and he wanted me to join him in business with some other partners, not doing the multi level side. Did the business, put in 10 million bucks. We all put in 10 million, 40 million in debt. But I signed joint and several, which I didn't understand in those days what that meant. And two of my partners were supposedly billionaires and they went broke. We bought some more companies, I ended up with $120 million in debt that I was on the hook for. No one else had any money. And I'm getting up to do a seminar wanting to throw up. It was a new threshold of control. So you know when you ski or you snowboard and you think you're maybe you're just new at it, and you think you're going down a blue or green, and it turns out to be a double black, <laughs> and you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, and so you have two choices. One is you start to go down, and you freak out, and you're going to die. You slam on the ground, try to hang on for dear life. Or the other is, maybe you focus on where you want to go, and you find a way to curve. You find a way to cut. And once you do it a couple of times, you, you, know, you have no more fear of that element. Now, my biggest one out of that, that led me to a billion. I have 31 companies now, to give you an idea, seven different industries as diverse as like, uh, you know, stem cells to virtual reality. We have the exclusive to the NBA now in virtual reality, to give you an example. And we do, I got 1,200 employees, we're on three continents, and we got $5 billion in sales. But I did that because I first stayed on one freaking yes, thing, and exactly so I got right. so masterful at it that I, 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 in the way I look at it, I'll give you one more metaphor. I, you, Probably not old enough to remember this, but I'm old remember a guy named Mel, I Mel, I forget his name. He was a the guy that... that Mel said, Diner? The no, great no, 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 no. <laughs> no, the guy that looked for gold on the Spanish galleon. I forget his name. Mel, I know this. But anyway, he found a half a billion dollars in gold, but it took him like 31 years <laughs> to do it. And you can't live on that. That's Maybe a good start. Maybe he loved the journey, though. He did not love the journey. Okay. His son was killed on the journey. Well, that's bad. He made no... Can you imagine 31 years of going out there, getting money from investors, and showing nothing? I mean, after a year, two, five, ten, some point, you hit your breaking point. He never hit his breaking point. So I looked at my businesses back then, and I was always looking for the new business that was a great yeah. opportunity. I loved what I was doing. It's emotionally rewarding, but low-margin business. And I had these meetings with a group of billionaires, and they said, you have not maximized. And then I saw this guy, Mel, and I thought, I don't believe, I have not the right beliefs. You need three beliefs to be successful in your business at the highest level. You have to believe, number one, what did this guy have to believe go 31 years? 
He had to believe, number one, that the treasure was out there. Number two, he had to believe, I'm going to find it. And number three, he had to believe it was going to be worth it. Yeah. If you don't believe there's that treasure in your business, you'll never finish. find it. And you've got to use those three things to go to another level. Miguel, to answer your question, I've now had a career for 20 plus years. I, at every minute, was running one of two companies. Wine yeah. Library or VaynerMedia. There was never a day in my life where I didn't have something that I called the 80% of what I do. That's right. That's exactly what you were saying. That's exactly right. I, I call it the meat, the main dish. You can go and have side dishes, and if your meat, if your steak is perfect, yeah. you'll always be able to absorb the losses right. because they're smaller losses. And then when something over here becomes bigger, you can turn that into the main part, and that could become the steak. Too many people have all side dishes and no steak. I want to say something else about it, too. Most but people massively overestimate what they're going to do in a year, and they underestimate what they can do in a decade. So what happens is they get all disappointed and frustrated, and they don't stay with the game. I told people... This is something... You know, I've been pounding patients. You've been pounding patients? Yeah. I, this is... This is I, I actually... Do you know that I, I genuinely think I'm the most patient? Do you know that I... Think I think I'm a lot of deceived people. Do you know that I genuinely call myself a tortoise in a hare's costume? Don't let my energy or my stage presence confuse what I've actually been doing. Yeah. No, I get it. I'm teasing. I know you are. I know. But, but, I think, but, but the reason I want to put it out there is I think it's an important thing that... Uh, it, it's an enormously important variable. I think so, too. Let me mention one thing with it. You really... I think all businesses, though... We've talked about focus. I just want to add one yeah. last piece of that before we go to what you're saying. I think all businesses should be running two businesses, the business you're in and the business you're becoming. Because if you only run the business you're excited about, you're going to become, you're going to miss the cash flow of managing your business. If you only focus on the day-to-day, -day, you're not anticipating the competition. This is Gary Vee, and you're in the Ask Gary Vee Show with Tony Robbins. Who's this? Yo, Gary, it's Nico from Chicago, man. Nico, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, man. What's your question? All right, so uh, just a couple sentences to give you, uh, you know, a cap of what I do. Uh, I'm building two things right now, which is a small business, my creative studio and my personal brand. Okay. So my creative studio does like photo, video content for small businesses, and my personal brand is just my creative content and me documenting my life through Instagram and YouTube. Okay. So I'm wondering, should I leverage, or should, or should I use my leverage and community for my personal brand and funnel that into my, you know, my business, or should I keep them separate, or what, should I, what do you think I should do? Well, look, obviously I know why you're asking this because I've lived this life, right? Now, the thing that's interesting about me, and I've talked about this, is a lot of my audience doesn't necessarily represent the clients of VaynerMedia. VaynerMedia does, you know, going to do $125 million in revenue this year, and it's mainly Fortune 500 companies who are not necessarily watching my 25-minute blog. Now, what I knew about being in the business you'll be in the future is that the technology would drag people down and that the 53-year-old cliche executive would eventually watch YouTube and be on Instagram. Yeah. I would tell you, as, here's what I would say to you, brother. Intent matters so much. As long as the content you're putting out and the stuff you're doing creatively isn't just a gateway to get clients just because of that, I think you'll be perfectly fine. It's going to happen naturally anyway, first and foremost, because people are going to become aware of you. I think, you know, listen, I wrote a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook. I think it's okay on your personal brand once in a while to say, hey, is anybody looking for small business clients? As long as that's three, six, seven percent of your, and I'm, that's an arbitrary number. As long as your audience doesn't feel like that's your intent. Look, Tony and I get compared to a lot of people that we are opposite of. But it's our energy and the way we roll that people think we look that part. The intent matters. So I would tell you that, you know, as long as you're asking instead of making, you win. Do you know how many people have landing pages where they get you in and you got some content and then all of a sudden you got to pay to keep going? That's making people pay. Putting out good okay. stuff to the world and then maybe some of it coming your way. Jab, 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 right hook was give, 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 and then ask. Most people interpret it as give, 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 and then take. That's a very big difference. Okay. Okay. So, I, yeah, I, so my first brand is, is like the complete, like it's exactly what you're describing. It has nothing to do with my business. I mean, it will work. The shit that I it work. will work. If Keep you compare it to some, kids, dude, dude, that kind dude, of shit. dude. If some, do you know how many people have given me business because I'm a Jets fan? That's real. We connected yeah. on the Jets, but it became a like absolutely. Speak your truths. Have pure intent. Work hard. A lot of good things happen. To, and by the way, I heard your structure. Your strategy is on point. You've got an 80% stake, you're building personal brand over at 20, you're doing YouTube and Instagram today as we record this, that's right. So yeah. you've got every piece in place. Keep going with your intuition. All right, thanks, brother. Thanks, I love you, man. Love you too, Good man. Tony. All right. Bye. Tony, while we transition, we'll get one more question in here. Uh, what's going on with you on social media? 
I remember very, 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 the, the last time I reached out to you, I got inspired. I yes, called I you, and I said, bro, Snapchat. This was 15 months ago. Yeah. Um, talk to me about your journey on that. And one other thing that we have to do before we leave. I've never asked you this, and I think it's really funny to ask here, and you may not remember. I will never forget being at South by Southwest 2008, 9, or 10, and I get this email. It says, Anthony Robbins. And then it's a voice email. Yes. And I'm like, I don't know, click. It's like, Gary, Tony Robbins. And I'm like, holy shit. I don't know if you recall that. Yes, I do. But what I'm curious about is, do you recall why you wrote that email? I don't remember that in particular, but I use audio emails much more than regular emails because context. people hear your voice, context. impact context, so you can't get that in normal yep. email. Plus, if there's a couple lines, I'll type it, but if yep. something has emotion to it, yep. I want someone to hear it so I can connect on this, the, the piece there. So that's it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right, let's go to this. And, and I'm not letting you off the hook. I want to know what's going on with you in social. Oh, I'll touch you that question let's, first. Let's, let's see this question. Please. You got it. Go. Hello. Hello, this is Gary Vaynerchuk, and you're in the Ask Gary V Show with Tony Robbins. Fucking hey, it is Gary V. It is. <laughs> Who's this? This is Doug, Austin, Texas. Doug, Austin, Texas. I love the man. My question for you is how can I possibly thank Gary V for pushing me through all these years? Starting in 2007, I'm looking at my 101 lines right now, talking <laughs> by you. Know your pal. You were in Austin with a book on me. Tony, love you in shallow house. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Just, I just wanted to call it and give you the gratitude. I'm helping away with this production company here in Austin, Texas. Just grassrooting it. It's been fun. And I appreciate you just hustling and showing us how it's done, man. I appreciate it. Listen, you, you go impact one solid. other person the right way to do it, and that's more than a payback. But if you find yourself in New York or wherever I am, I'm going to be in Austin in a couple weeks for, for South By. Come and shake my hand. Send, yes, send an email to Gary. Hair, I will, man. It's good to see you. Thank you for the love. Peace out. Thanks. I forgot about that amazing appearance you made. Was that fun? Which one? The Hollywood, when you became a Hollywood oh, yeah, star. Yeah. You know what's interesting is uh, the guy that wrote that is legally blind. That's why the story is about seeing the beauty in, in someone and not seeing I the surface. And he bought my audio program because he's blind. It, personal power. He listened to it. He went to the Fairland Brothers. Never wrote a movie in his life. Sold in film. They'd asked me three times to be in films. I said, look, I'm not an actor. I appreciate it, but no. They sent me this script. They're like, you're in it. It made me laugh. I cried. But then what they didn't tell me was, they rewrote that section. The writer didn't do it. He had like a fortune teller doing it. And they said, ah, that's bullshit. If you were stuck on an elevator with Tony Robbins, your life would change. <laughs> so I show up and I start speaking. And they didn't tell him and they didn't tell me. This is how it came about. So he hears my voice and he comes, Tony Robbins, and tells me the whole story. So then I go to do the piece, and I've got Jason Alexander there, right? Yeah, yeah. And I said, look, guys, you wrote this whole thing. I'm honored that's to be not, the center of it. Yeah. It's not me. I wouldn't say this shit. So I said, let me show it. He goes, well, there's no script. I said, he's an actor. Let him act. And so when I healed him like that, when you see him shocked, that isn't acting. He wasn't prepared for it, to give you an idea. We did it over and over again. It's a fun trip. Tony, end with this for me. What has been your journey on social? Where are you, where are you now? What are you excited about? Are you into it? Is it hard for you? Are you very busy? Like every, yeah, you no. know, don't pander to us. I'm, no, actually, no, 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 no. I'm curious to where you're at. This young man right here runs yep. it for me. Yep. So Tyler, he does a great job. But I do all my own personal components. Yep. I get him to go leverage, yep. get the pictures, yep. the graphics, yep. Yep. all those things. I found um, that Facebook Live is one of my favorite tools at this stage. Because yep. we get three quarters of a million people. It's Watch like you have your own yeah. show. You yeah. can just go in there and boom, and yep. it goes. So that tool to me is one of the most valuable tools. But you know, we've got you know a million people on Instagram. We've got, you know, we've got ten million here. people there. Yeah. What, what do you want to see him? This is this is your chance. This is the air cover you've been waiting for. I'm gonna I'm time. gonna yeah I'm gonna be your prote- I'm gonna be your shield here. This Thank is the you. right room to do this. Where's the place that you'd like to see him focus a little more on? For me, yes. Had you asked me six months ago, I would have said Snapchat. But yep. now I'll say Instagram Stories. Yep. yep. A little sneak peek behind the scenes of what he's up to. I, I'd love to see that. And I love, and I love that Instagram is you more your personal life to a great extent. You know, each piece, you know, if you're yeah, going Yeah, Facebook's like mainstream media. Yeah, exactly. like, that's 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 to his point, he's exactly right. Six months ago it would have been Snapchat, and like, and tomorrow somebody might buy Vine, create one feature, and we all care. Yeah. It's such, it's a moving market. It's without a doubt. Without a doubt. Thank you, brother. It's great to see you. Listen, you people watching, I want to plant one seed, one seed for you, too. Uh, both of us have achieved a lot. I'm sure many of you have achieved a lot, too. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. This guy is very fulfilled. That's why he works 24 hours a day. His whole hustle is that it fulfills him. Same thing with me. If you don't find what fulfills you, all the achievement's worthless. 
I had a really cool conversation, and I, I talk about it at the end of the book here, because money is not going to make you happy. It'll give you resources, it'll give you tools, but you got a two million year old brain that's always looking for what's wrong because it's trying to make you survive. If you're going to override that, you've got to learn what it is that's going to fulfill you most. And if you discover that and you pour all of your juice into that, forget the money. The money will be fine, but what you really will have is an extraordinary life. That's what this character has done for himself because he lives it every single day. I live it every single day. There's nothing short of that that's going to give you what you want. So hoping you read this, you'll also find there's pieces there about how to master the mind because this is what messes this up. You can be a billionaire and be it's, miserable it's just by operating thoughts. system, baby. We, like, we're the only creatures on the planet that can think a thought and make ourselves miserable or think a thought and make ourselves before it. So take control of your mind. That's really the end of the game for you. That's how you serve up. Two things. You've got to ask the question of the day. That's what every guest does. So you okay. get to ask a question, and there'll be thousands of comments on Facebook and YouTube. So give that a thought of what okay. question you want answered. Okay. Number two, I'm about to take a picture with this man. I'm going to give away 100 copies of this on Instagram over the next 24 hours. Cool. That's exciting. Question I have is, what is your definition of a magnificent life? I'd really be curious. Like, oh, what's okay. your criteria for a magnificent life? Which to me is life on your terms. It's different for everybody. I'd love to know what yours is. I'd love to see the variety of people. Thank you, brother. My pleasure. Good seeing you, man. You keep asking questions, <laughs> we'll keep answering them. On this episode, the legend stops by. Awesome. Love Thanks, it. Brother. All right, let's take some oh social media content yeah. pictures. Yeah. Kind of I cut the intro up, but that's fine. Right. You got all your eyes. Yeah. 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 Are you gonna Are you gonna post an Instagram, uh, like standard Instagram photo? Yep. Because I'll be going into those comments and do some surprises too. Then. That's so sweet. Have you met John? Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right.